Hello, my name is Dirkje and this is the tribe of the fox. And my name is Martin. Welcome, folks. Today we want to talk a little bit about a being from the Norse sagas and the Eddas that is less well known than some others. We would like to talk a little bit about Thorgerder. And well, we prepared this video and so many questions were raised about who Thor Gerder is. So when Dirkin and me first learned about her, she was presented to us as a troll woman, or even as the queen of the trolls. So Dirkje, that word troll, it's, it's a very strange word because it can mean so many things. Yeah, I think everybody knows the, uh, the troll from the fairy tales. And when I was visiting Norway, it's very funny. You see the trolls everywhere and they, they are kind of adorable, ugly, uh, silly, <laughs> also sweet. Uh, little uh, creatures or, or big creatures, but that is a kind of natural uh, creature uh, in, in Norway. And um, yeah, everybody knows that kind of troll eh, from, I think, from fairy tales, maybe from Disney movies as well. Eh, the troll is silly, is uh, uh, dumb, is uh, aggressive, is destroying everything and uh, brings also magic in fairy tales. But is that the whole story? That's the question, eh? because um, yeah, we, we find a little bit more information about trolls. Uh, they can be giants, uh, Jotnar, uh, and they have also connections with all kinds of beings that practice magic. So witches are calling uh, trolls, magicians, Ciruses, Volvas, uh, Cydraconas, um, yeah, they're all mentioned trolls, huh? So you are also a troll, uh, Martijn. <laughs> ah, very ugly one. <laughs> a very ugly one. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and I, rem I remember yeah. something else about trolls. I was always reading these cartoons as a kid from Suske and Biske, and our Dutch yeah. and Flemish viewers probably yeah. read those uh, comic books as well. And one of these these uh, episodes was in the Viking Age, and there the trolls were presented as little vicious, uh, aggressive beings. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice, uh, <laughs> nice story. Yeah, from yeah. Siska and Viska, yeah, that's a uh, funny, funny uh, cartoons. Yeah, and, and they also mentioned uh, uh, nature beings, yeah? uh, beings in the woods, yeah. earth-like beings, maybe. Um, yeah, a lot of names, uh, isn't it? Yeah, that's the confusing thing, actually. But, yeah, Thor Gerder. Um, what kind of troll is that? Who is she? Well, first of all, first things first, always go back to the written sources. Although written sources are not everything, but it can bring you on the right track. So there are several sagas in which uh, Thorgerder is named. For instance, the Jomsviking saga is, is one of the most well-known ones, but she is also mentioned in the prose Edda. And um, another source, but that's not an official old source, it's something new. It's in this book from Raven Caldera, the yeah. Jotun book. And she is mentioned, oh, you got him too. Yeah, <laughs> I, got, I got this from you, so yeah. <laughs> thank you. Oh yeah, yeah, I ordered <laughs> yeah. that one. <laughs> yeah. So there's only a little, little, mm -hmm. a few lines, not more than this. So in the Jom speaking saga, for instance, um, Thorgerder is mentioned as the patron deity of Jarl Hakon, Hakon Sigurdsson. Uh, a patron deity. In other uh, sagas, she is, um, she is, for instance, a forest troll going to a king, that's a meeting, a forest troll meeting. <laughs> and in other sagas, she is mentioned to be the daughter of King Hulgi. I think I pronounce it right, because Hulgi has these two dots above the O, which you 
use in certain languages. So yeah, King Hakon, it was his patron deity was Thorgerder. And the interesting thing is, the Thorgerder is quite often portrayed as pretty violent. So in the Jom speaking saga, she appears in a battle. So Jarl Hakon is in a sea battle. So two fleets fighting each other. And he even sacrifices his seven year old son. He sacrificed other things, but he was satisfied with his son. So that's a bl pretty bloody sacrifice. And what you also read is that she started to perform weather magic to help uh, Jarl Hakon. And in other sagas, Thorgerder was also mentioned doing weather magic. And um, yeah, the human sacrifice is also mentioned in, the, in another saga when a wooden effigy of a human being was made and a real human heart had to be put in it. Mm -hmm. So that being started to take revenge on Hakon's enemies. So it's all about war, revenge, uh, human sacrifice, weather magic, and she even participated in the sea battle that you can read about in the Jom speaking saga. So that's pretty interesting, uh, all of that. But the tribe of the fox always says, yeah, you have to read the sagas. So you should certainly read that, but then do shamanic journeying or trans journeying. And that is where our Dirkje comes in. What have you experienced uh, in connecting with Tora Gerder? Yeah, that's uh, funny because uh, I really uh, was not investigating trolls. So I was completely blank going into that uh, ceremony and you joined as well. Ceremony, yeah, ceremony. with a lot of people. Yeah, with a lot of people in a group. And I was asked to represent Targather. I didn't. I did not know her. <laughs> me neither. No. And uh, there was also somebody sitting next to me. Do you know that, Martina? Yeah, because Torger has a sister, sister. called yeah. Irpa. So that lady was representing Irpa, and Dirkje was channeling oh, the energy yeah. of Torger. That's all. okay. The sister. Yeah. Okay. We were sitting right next to each other, I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was sitting in a, a kind of circle, in the middle of a circle with two chairs. And I was sitting on the left. And my sister Troll was sitting on the right. Yeah. And I was together. And she is the queen of trolls. And so she is the queen. And uh, the story goes, I don't know where it's from. I think from Yeda that people gave her really sacrifices. There was a cult around uh, Torgada. People were um, honoring her in a little uh, sacred place in the woods. And that was probably a little temple. They found a little um, um, square, square place with a roof on top. So I was sitting in the middle of a circle. I was going in a very deep trance. I am used to do that because I am working with trance a lot. And um, the group was, was calling her. So everybody was kind of chanting. I don't know, I know it's not a, a Western uh, name chanting, but everybody was calling her all the time. Uh, singing, calling, maybe uh, a rattling or something. I, I don't remember. Um, and I had a cloth over my head. So I could not see anything. That's normal when you go into a deep trance to put a cloth over your head. The vulvas did do that as well. So I did do that as well. And then I am not connected to the surroundings. I am going inside myself. And, um, and I did not see the, the people. And then uh, the people of the group, they started offering me things. I don't know what, maybe coins or something or one by one. And... Um, yeah, I, I do not exactly what they brought to me, but I was, I felt that I was only interested in meat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And meat was not included. <laughs> Raw meat. <laughs> and uh, I, I was not angry. 
I was not angry or aggressive. So yeah, trolls are mentioned as aggressive, but I did not feel that energy. I was, uh, I felt craving for, for meat, but that's it. And um, yeah, I noticed a, a, a very teasing energy in me. So I, uh, yeah, I, I did not take it very seriously. I did not take the people who brought me the sacrifices. I did not take them very seriously. I was messing around and fooling around. And I really did not understand the submissive attitude. They were so reverent and humble. And I really did not understand that. It's a funny feeling because I, that's, that's really something human. And maybe that's something from the uh, Abrahamic uh, uh, age eh? to, to kneel down. And I think people were kneeling down. You, you yeah, ma many of them, many of them did. Many of uh, them. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I did not understand that <laughs> as a troll, as a queen of trolls. So, mm. yeah, but I was not aggressive. I was not silly. I was very far from humans. Uh, I was not human, but I know how to nurse. I, I not know. I knew how to be a mother. That kind of energy was not strange to me. So that's a kind of human thing as well. Um, and I felt uh, primitive and raw and primal. And yeah, at least that's how it felt. And it is a nice feeling. <laughs> it's, a, it's another part of her emotional range to feel that. And uh, yeah, I remember uh, my time that I gave symbols to people. I, I don't remember it anymore because I was in a deep trance. Yeah, it was so, actually pretty amazing because folks, Dirk is now telling you about that she was in a deep trance, but I have actually seen this from mm -hmm. up close. Yeah. And there was this other lady sitting next to Dirk here who was representing Erpa, the twin sister of, or the sister of Thor Gerder. And at just, a, uh, just watching this, just watching Dirk, it was amazing. I was quite stupefied by just looking at this. And I thought, wow, this one is in a, quite a deep trance. I've never seen that before mm -hmm. in those days. Now I have seen it more often and even experienced it. But in those days, I was really amazed about it. It was four years ago, by the way. Yeah. And I remember um, coming up to Dirk or because it was not Dirk no, anymore. No, it's not about me. Yeah. Yeah, it was really Torgerde, except the physical body was Dirk with yeah. a cloth over her head. So she could not see me. And what happened was um, I want, she wanted me to, that I would stick out my hands to her and she put two golden rings, not physical golden rings, because she didn't have physical <laughs> golden rings, but she put two golden rings in my hands. That was four years ago, and I was totally clueless why. Now mm -hmm. I start to understand, but we talk about this later. But okay. it was totally awesome to see Dirk here really transforming into Thor Yeah. Yeah, about the rings, I still don't have a clue, kind of clue. But, and, and, and there was another person that I gave something and I don't know who it was and I don't know what I gave. You don't know. Okay. No, 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 no idea. Quite interesting to feel this uh, energy representing her. And it is absolutely not about me. It's completely, no, no I mean, I, yeah, I'm used to, to do this. And it is, yeah, it is a kind of experience because you feel energy from things that, uh, you, I, I don't know. Huh? I, I don't know these kind of things, but you, I, I could feel it so clear. But the group was helping as well, you know. They were chanting uh, and rapping yeah, yeah, and the drumming. Energy. And we were busy for days. It was not just uh, one hour and do this. We were busy together for days. So the energy yeah. was really, really powerful. And everything is possible if you do this <laughs> with a group. It reminds me of the of the of the vulva 
uh, 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 she has a lot of helpers. Yeah, that help yeah. her with singing and chanting and dancing. And, and uh, the, yeah, I, I now understand because then the energy is going out of the roof. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I think it's really interesting what you just said about um, all these really submissive people who are almost crawling of, over the floor, you know, because I think shamanic people are not followers. Shamanic pe oriented people are not followers. They are not alphas. They're not betas and whatever's underneath it. Because people who, who are alpha type of people, the leaders, they also need a hierarchy, just like their followers. I think that basically the more shamanic people are basically classified as sigma type of people who basically mm -hmm. make their own plan and stick to it. So they yeah, don't want yeah, to be I leaders, they don't want to be followers, they just want to do the right thing. Yeah, I think there are servants. Yeah, and I think that uh, within hedonism and paganism, there is a hierarchy. Yeah, we need alpha males and beta males, and, <laughs> and we need that. But you are really talking now about shamanic people, about witches, about volvas. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They're outside of normal social order they are not part of the hierarchy they can be loved or despised um, yeah. based on their performance uh, and their acts but they never really live in the village they never really belong to society they live on the edge mm -hmm. and that's why uh, the dutch word hagetesse it means heads rider yeah. so a heads is basically used in between two pieces of land, for instance. So a hats yeah. is a border. Yeah. And um, the hats riders, the hagetesses, they go over the border or they go just on the border yeah. between two worlds. The in-between world. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not being part of the village, not being really part of society. Mm. Because you basically, if you practice shamanism, then you basically live in two worlds. You're also connected with other worlds. You're never 100% owned by this world. And you're not 100% belonging to another world. No. You're on the border, on the edge. And that's so interesting because we in Europe, Northwestern Europe and also Eastern Europe and probably also South, we have our own shamans. We do not need Hinduism or uh, Amer uh, um, chiefs from, from the Indians, from America. Yeah, they're probably doing a kind of the same thing, but we have our own sources. And that's, uh, yeah, that's very important to find out how it works. And that's why we do the, those kind of practices. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, representing Torger, that kind of silly things. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's not silly. No, it's it's unbelievable, interesting. Yeah, because um, you just mentioned your trans journey, so that was in a group setting. Now, of course, you don't need to journey in a group. It's very efficient, by the way, but you can also do this alone. Which I tried. I tried to reach Torgerder in Jotunheim, the land of the giants and I can be very brief about this because it failed I did not reach her now that's really strange because as the regular viewers know I love journeying to the Ironwood now the Ironwood is part of Jotunheim so why can't I reach Jotunheim but why can I reach the Ironwood Jarnfeeder which is in Jotunheim. That's pretty weird. I think I, I have an idea. I always had this feeling that the Ironwood in Jotunheim is actually something different. I always thought this, this, this Ironwood, it feels like an in-between realm, or maybe even as the underworld. And the interesting thing is, now I was reading the Cool Vager, I say it wrong, Cool Vager book uh, written by Ekwartu. And he 
is a man who is uh, spiritually quite well developed and a journeyer himself. And he wrote, there are two Jotunheims, Heimer. One in the level of Midgaard, our world, and one in the underworld. And that one contains the iron wood. So mm -hmm. I thought, ah, this explains why yeah. I can reach the iron wood in that particular Jotunheim, but not the Jotunheim where Thorgerder lives. That's probably on the same level as Midgaard. And I'm an underworld journeyer. Yeah, quite a discovery. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but what do you think about this? Does it make sense to you? Yeah, you mentioned it and I was I was not sure at first, but uh, yeah, it's 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 a possibility. I mean, we our, our human mind wants to cat categorize everything. Yeah. And uh, also if you read uh, uh, everything about paganism and hedonism and about uh, the pantheon and the gods everything is classified and i really think it's not working that way we need it for our brains and to put things in boxes but things are i'm finding out that things are working on a different way it's, it's all different yeah so by journeying you discover this yeah it's not by all that black and white so yeah so you probably could be right about what you are saying and I think that's um, the same with more things that we thought we knew, but yeah, it's, it's, it's different. Yeah, and we also discover this by journeying to beings like Thorgerder who are not so well known. Mm -hmm. So that's also interesting to leave the beaten path because certain gods and goddesses are always visited by people and yeah. others are a bit more forgotten. But Dirk, these two rings that Thor Gerder gave me. Mm -hmm. I think I'm closer to the answer now. Ah, because okay, I'm curious. Wh what I did, <laughs> what I did was I made a journey in a different way. So not the traditional way with the Volva stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. But basically men can use the stuff as well. Um, what I did is I used a technique that comes from therapy. It's called system therapy or system work. And I used that technique, um, not for therapeutic reasons, but just to connect with, with all kinds of deities. Yeah, it, it works like, like crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it has an overlap with shamanism, by the way. Yeah system work and there's also a beautiful book about this and i will show it later to you um, and what i discovered when i tuned into Thorgerder, my whole body became cold from the inside out but not cold in a way um, sometimes if there's no energy in your body then it can feel cold but this was different this was a natural cold and later I read that she was an ice giant. <laughs> At the moment, I did not realize that. <laughs> so that might be the case. However, with these rings, why does she gave me this? She is very interested in my, how do I say this? My, my pure self. So as a human being, during the, your lifetime, you, you have a lot of experiences and that basically shapes you, it forms you, it forms your behavior and you get stained and tainted and hurt over your, uh, the course of your life and you also uh, uh, encounter a lot of happy things that you cling to, but that's all added to your pure self. And Thorgerder seems to be extremely interested in what's behind the facade, in what is your genuine, real you or me in this case. So maybe that was, and there was another strange thing I noticed when I tuned into Thorgerder, she was riding a boar. That's nowhere in the sagas. So that's just unverified personal noses from me. So it's not a fact, it's what I have seen. It's only becomes more reliable if other people see the same, but that has not happened yet. So it's unverified personal noses that she rides on a board. So that's just what I have seen. 
So yeah, that was an interesting thing. But I think I have a connection with her. And also in another journey to Helheim, I encountered a troll woman who gave me two rings. So there's just something between me and trolls. Yeah. So yeah, whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Derek, you had a nice poem, wasn't it? Yeah, that is uh, from the Prose Edda. Yeah, I didn't know there was a lot written about trolls. But um, yeah, the, there goes a story in the, the Prose Edda described. An encounter between a troll woman and a 9th century scald uh, named Bragi, Bragi Bodasson. And um, Bragi was going through the forest very late at night. And then he encountered uh, a woman, a troll. And the troll, she was asking him, uh, who are you, who are you, who are you? <laughs> and then he explained who he was. And then uh, she explained who she was. And then um, I will read it for, for you. She describes herself as follows. They call me a troll, moon of the earth hungry, well sucker of the giant. Destroyer of the Stormson, beloved follower of the Cirrus, guardian of the Navjord, swallower of the Wheel of Heaven. The Wheel of Heaven is the sun, swallower of the sun, I think. What is a troll if not that? Yeah, quite epic, isn't it? <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah, not she a, is epic. She yeah, is it's epic. not an uh, undeveloped creature. <laughs> It's, it's not an undeveloped creature, I think, if you read this. Yeah. Quite mysterious. Yeah, and that's why it's so sad that she is now on the background. And once she was the, the patron deity of Jarl Hakon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. I think it must have been changed into this troll-like cartoonesque figure we know now. Yeah. It must have been uh, something else before. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah, and I think very, very ancient, <laughs> very old, yeah. interesting. Yeah. But I like the troll energy. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I felt yeah. it, so, yeah. <laughs> it has a powerful energy. Yeah, so you can call me a fat troll, uh, Martijn. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> that, would be, that would be lying. <laughs> that would be lying if I would did. I, I promise you guys to show you a book. Hold on, please. So I got it oh, right behind me. I know what book you took. <laughs> yeah, it's actually from it's Derek's book. Actually, <laughs> this is written by Dan van Kampenhout. He is a shaman here in the Netherlands. It called Images of the Soul, Beelden van de Ziel. This is about system work, system therapy. And just like I just mentioned, it has a great overlap yeah. with shamanism. Absolutely. Dan, yeah, and Dan van Kampenhout, he is both a shaman and a system therapist. So the guy knows what he is talking about. So Beelden van de Ziel, if you can read Dutch, then uh, I can definitely recommend yeah. to read this book. I know it's there are. Good. Yeah, I know he has a few books that is that are, that are tra translated in English and Spanish. I think, okay. but I'm not sure if that book is in English, but you can find out. So, uh, yeah. Well, I think th this is it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I think we said everything that we wanted to say, uh, didn't we? Yeah. So it was good to see you again on Zoom. I guess yeah. that's how we record this. Yeah. <laughs> well, so, thank you for well, being with us. And uh, we'd like to see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>